Hi everyone, welcome back to the episode of Ask Dr. Nick. My name is Dr. Nick Schmielkoffer and I work for the Neurologic Wellness Institute. And today's question is, does the Epstein-Barr virus, which causes mono, start or as it acts as a trigger to the start of multiple sclerosis or MS? And this question has been looked at for many years as there has been a wide association between people that have Epstein-Barr virus or EBV uh, with multiple sclerosis. And so the study that I'm going to share is looking at a longitudinal study of uh, military personnel when they were tested in the military and then who developed multiple sclerosis. And there shows to be a clear distinction how EBV can be a causal trigger for multiple sclerosis versus many other viruses. And so this is an important one because MS or multiple sclerosis is a very debilitating condition. What happens is it's an autoimmune attack on the myelin sheath or the parts of the brain that kind of wrap around the axons uh, in the brain and the spinal cord. And therefore it makes uh, movement, it makes other communication, uh, visual communication, or sorry, ability to, to uh, see, so vision, um, poor, those communication not as efficient. And when that communication is not as efficient, it means that there can be a multitude of symptoms from uh, sensory changes, from not being able to see well, um, from uh, lack of vision, from inability to to move or like move to pick up a coffee cup or move well with good coordination. And the Epstein-Barr virus is relatively common and it causes infectious mononucleosis, which the typical symptoms are, are fatigue and it generally affects the spleen. Uh, but many people can get EBV without even knowing it because they can have a, just a simple presentation like a flu-like illness without actually getting the fatigue, the major fatigue of infectious mono. So let's go to the article and we will take a look at how this analysis, how Epstein-Barr virus can be a causal trigger of multiple sclerosis. So um, this article is a report. Uh, it's in research from 2022 in science, our journal Science in January 2022. And talks about a longitudinal analysis reveals high prevalence of Epstein-Barr virus associated with multiple sclerosis. So again, multiple sclerosis is a chronic inflammatory demyelinating or like demyelin the myelin disease of the central nervous system. Um, MS has been hypothesized that it could be caused by Epstein-Barr virus. So they looked at 10 million young adults on active duty in the US military. 955 of them were diagnosed with MS during their period of service. The risk of MS increased 32 fold, 32 fold after infection with EBV, but was not increased after other infections, including like cytomegalovirus or CMV. Uh, they also looked at serum levels of neurofilament light chain, which is a biomarker of axonal degeneration, also increased only after the EBV seroconversion. So only after they found EBV was positive in these infections or in these uh, individuals. These findings cannot be explained by any known risk factor for MS and suggest EBV is a leading cause of MS, okay? So let's just go through a, a few parts of this article. Um, we know EBV is a herp form of herpes virus, okay? So in this article here, they documented 955 incident MS cases among anti-duty military personnel. Um, cases were matched to two randomly selected uh, other groups, they're, they're matched for their military branches, collection of blood samples, all these other things. So only one of the 801 multiple sclerosis cases occurred in an individual who did not have EBV, it was EBV negative in the last sample, okay? Um, which is pretty, like, if, if everyone else did, that's that's pretty awesome, so uh, a pretty high connection there. Um, the high seroconversion rate among individuals who developed MS during the follow-up, so 97%, contrast with the 57% rate of seroconversion, seroconversion observed among individuals who did not develop MS. So people who, developed, who didn't develop MS still may have had 
EBV, again, EBV is very common. People can get it all the time, but there's something how EBV triggers it in those patients with MS, okay? So let's look here. This is kind of a, um, an overview of the study. Um, basically, the best way to look at it is they looked at the serofilament light, serum neurofilament light, the uh, EBV status, the cytomegalovirus status, okay? Um, so they took samples, three different samples throughout their active duty. Um, most of the time that occurred between like 15 and 22. Um, and the age of onset for MS could have occurred anywhere from, you know, 16, 17 years old, all the way up to 40. But the median was kind of in the middle, um, right around 25 to 30 years. Okay. And so here, uh, it pretty clearly shows that people who had MS were the green line versus no MS were the blue. So there's a decent amount of people who had MS at the second and third sample that did not the first. Uh, sorry, that who had EBV, but did not have MS at the second or third. But when you look at the people that had MS, um, a lot of times they had the, you know, 85% of them had EBV positive uh, in their second serum sample. Okay, so the first one might have been at the start of uh, deployment, and then second might be later on. And the third, 97% had EBV positive um, that were MS, okay, 95 versus 57, okay, uh, versus CMV, people that had MS or didn't have MS, they were all pretty low. There was no clear um, distinction between the two, okay. Um, the other thing here then is that the, if we look at this part, the risk ratio for MS according to EBV status, EBV seroconversion by the time of the third sample and EBV seropositivity the time of the first sample was associated with a 32 and 26 fold increase of developing MS respectively. So basically, if they were um, seroconverted by the third, as in they had EBV um, positive by the third sample, um, they were 32% more likely to have or develop MS, which again, people with CMV, none. There is no risk ratio for that. Okay, so what does it show down here? If we look at this one here, the causal interpretation of results requires ruling out the possibility of other systematic differences. Um, and so between individuals who are seroconverted and those who remain EBV negative, um, the differences can be into two categories, the confounding by known or unknown factors and the reverse causation model. Okay, so basically a 32% 32-fold in, increase in MS risk. Uh, any confounder would have to confer an over 60-fold increase in the risk of EBV seroconversion um, for an over 60-fold risk of MS. So what does that mean? Basically, something else would have to um, be a much greater risk factor or a much greater um, negative risk factor for seroconversion if if EBV is not um, the a true cause, okay. Um, the other these other strong associations that could be that is that basically people have different genes, and so the HLA DR15 allele has been shown to increase MS risk threefold, threefold, not that much. Um, so therefore, maybe people with this risk plus getting EBV could act synergistically in causing MS. Okay, so that's a likely possibility that I just wanted to emphasize there. Um, here, this graph also shows just that um, basically the neurofilament light levels, which is the um, showing axonal degeneration, which can occur after MS is kind of, or after the autoimmune attack on the axons. And so people with MS did not have that much neurofilament light before EBV infection. Uh, at the time of the first EBV positive sample, Maybe they were a little bit higher, but it's not significant. And then NFL or neurofilament light levels after EBV infection, for sure, definitely was more significantly higher in MS patients than non-MS patients. Um, and so again, it just kind of shows it. So people with MS that developed EBV after the EBV infection, boom, it rose up with a change in neurofilament light. So that is producing the axonal degeneration versus no MS 
um, they did not get that neurofilament light expansion. So again, was it the genes that was that was causing it maybe, or that initiated it with the EBV infection? Was it their diet? Was it how much inflammation they were under, how much stress um, on top of getting EBV infection? Uh, we don't know, but these are all possibilities that we need to look at. So um, basically, I just wanted to show that EBV is a possible causal factor in triggering MS. Now, of course, there are these other factors that are involved, but this is something to always uh, look at. And the, the need for when we do get sick, even if it's a minor sickness, we take care of it with you know, proper nutrition, proper supplementation to therefore get rid of any uh, viral or bacterial infection that we might have. And then knowing that if you have a predilection for MS because it runs in your family, then to it is very important that you uh, do these things preventively to help to prevent an EBV infection from harboring and therefore starting or causing triggering MS in, in yourself. Uh, I've done other videos in the past on nutrition for MS and other treatment modalities that we have, um, but to say the least, a ketogenic diet or a high fat diet, one with cholesterol and a lot of good uh, EPA and DHA fats, omega-3 fats, can be very beneficial. So uh, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. If you have any suggestions for future topics, I would love to hear them. Thanks again and have a great day. Stay healthy.